Hi everyone! In this video tutorial, I'll show you how to use Bricks Builder Interactions feature to swap or change sticky images on Content Scroll. As you can see on the screen, there are actually two columns, one of which is sticky and holds a set of images, while the next one with the text card scrolls normally and causes the images to change. I believe it's not hard to guess that each text card corresponds to a different image. Even though this looks like a scroll triggered event, we are actually going to use the two interaction triggers, the enter view port and the leave view port trigger, or the event. Let's see what it takes to build something like that in Bricks Builder. I'll start with two columns container. The first one is named or labeled images, and the second one text cards. I'm going to insert my first image for media library. The image should be full size, I'll use the object fit cover option because I'm about to change the image height and without object fit cover my images will probably end up being distorted. Caption type will be no caption and no need for lazy loading. The image will be 62 VH high, it can be more, it can be less, whatever suits you best. And I will also assign the custom class name and custom CSS ID to each image. The CSS class name will be the image and the custom CSS ID will be image-1. I'm going to need the CSS class name for more general things, so to speak, while the CSS ID is solely used, will be solely used for the purpose of interactions. Let me now duplicate my image three times. Let me label all duplicates properly and select different image from media library for each of them. In order to position each image one over another, I'll change their CSS position to absolute. In Briggs Builder, if you were to duplicate the element that has a custom CSS ID assigned to it, the duplicate itself shall not preserve it. So I have to assign a new and unique ID to each image. It's gonna be image number two, image number three, and image number four, where the number at the end corresponds to the text card number. The images column itself should be 100 VH. It must have a CSS position sticky. And the content should be centered alongside the vertical axis. Let me now add my text cards. I already saved them all to individual templates in order to speed everything up, so I'll simply insert one by one. At the very end, I'll insert some dummy content too, because I need a little bit more scrolling meat, so to speak, for the purpose of demonstration. Each next text card has a background color, which is something I did on purpose so you can see where exactly a particular text card ends and the next one begins. Now I have to adjust the text card's height. It should match the image's column height of 100 VH, so that, mathematically speaking, the image's column and cards are in sync height-wise, of course. And each text card CSS position must be set to relative. So I'll repeat that for each text card. As you can see, I ended up with the left-hand side column being sticky and stuck for as long as there's enough content in the right-hand side column to pick it up. Let's now stop for a moment and briefly explain two things. First, how the image swap effect is supposed to function, and second, the logic behind the image swap trigger. So, the image swap is based on two different custom CSS classes that should be toggled whenever either of two viewport triggers or events occur, the enter or, or the leave viewport event. When I say that two different CSS classes should be toggled, I mean that the default one is being removed in favor of another one taking its place, which ends up with a new set of CSS properties being assigned to the target element. I will add my custom CSS code to the outermost container because that's how it gets exported with everything else. As usually, you are able to download a training file and as usually, the link can be found in this video description text. So the image CSS class is already assigned to each image widget and is used to define the initial state of each image with the opacity of zero. Another class called the image in is used to define the state of image when the enter viewport event occurs and it'll set the image opacity to 100%. 
By the way, in order to prevent the, the custom CSS take place in Break Builder Editor, I can prepend, prepend my custom CSS classes with another class, Bricks is Frontend, which will make my CSS code function only in frontend. Each step between the two different CSS classes will be animated by the CSS transition property. That's the reason I'm going to add a transition property to both of my CSS classes. I'm animating the image opacity in a time span of 0.2 seconds with an ease in out effect. Now, when it comes to the logic behind the image swap triggers, we have to be more creative. I believe that many of you have heard about the GSAP and scroll trigger animations. Maybe you work with it. And most likely you're trying to, to resolve our effect within the context of these two. But the enter viewport and leave viewport interaction events are very extremely basic. Whenever the target element hits the viewport top or bottom, even a one single pixel, that very element has officially entered the viewport, regardless how many pixels are still invisible or hidden. In the same way, the target element has officially left the viewport only in case none of its pixels are visible. All right? So in this case scenario, a real GSAP and scroll trigger animations are like several light years away. Because of the fact that there is no common element across my text card that can be used as a trigger point, I'll have to create one. That's why I'm going to add a blank diff element to my second text card and I'm going to name it marker. I'm going to label it marker. I'll make it 20 pixels wide and 20 pixels high. It's supposed to be positioned absolutely. I'll stick it to the right hand side of the text card to be more prominent. And I'm going to add some background color to it for the sake of visibility as well. All the markers will, will be subject of the CSS code that is yet to be added. So I have to assign a custom CSS class to the marker itself. And the class name will be dmarker. I'm starting with the second text card because the first one doesn't need to trigger any image change. The first image should be initially visible. So I'll handle the first image later. The marker is by default positioned to the vertical center because all the content is supposed to be aligned that way. And if I change the content vertical alignment for whatever reason I might have, the marker alignment complies. This is not okay in our case, so I'll go back to my CSS code and position it properly. Now the million dollar question. As the marker is used to trigger the image change, what would be the most appropriate moment to trigger that change? We know that each text card relates to a particular image, so it might seem odd if the image shows up too soon or too late. After doing some tests, I figured that the best timing would be the point where the text card is about to reach three quarters of the image height, bottom to top wise. So we can say that whenever my text card top hits the three quarters of the image height, fade in the upcoming text card image. Or we can say that whenever the upcoming text card is three quarters visible, fade in the corresponding image. Mathematically speaking, these two statements are completely identical. If I translate that to the CSS and consider the fact that the marker is a subject of the enter and leave viewport event, its top position should be the sum of the 50% and 16VH. That's why I use the CSS calc function. And I'm going to say the marker. The marker's top position is going to be calculate 50% plus 16VH, whatever it is. This is something that works for me in this case, which means it's not chiseled in stone and you can change it to whatever you find more suitable. You can see that the marker's top is now at a position where the text card's top reaches about the three quarters of the image height. Now that we have the trigger element positioned properly, it's time to set up the interaction. As I already said, we're going to use the enter and leave viewport triggers to control the image change. That's why I'll choose enter viewport first. The action should be toggle attribute. The attribute or the key that I'm about to toggle is the class. Which CSS class? It should be the default image class named the image. The target will be CSS selector whose ID is 
image number two. Don't forget the hash sign before the ID name. With the first interaction, we have removed the default CSS class D image, and now we have to define another one which will add a different CSS class instead. Settings wise, the second interaction is a copy of the first interaction with one little exception, which is the CSS class name. So I'll simply duplicate the interaction and change the class name to D image in. That new CSS class should get the opacity of our image to 100%. In order to restore the CSS class name, I will need two more interactions for the leave viewport event or the trigger. So whenever the marker leaves the viewport, be it at the top or the bottom, the image in CSS class must be removed and at the same time the default CSS class must be restored. So I'll duplicate everything twice and change the trigger from enter viewport to leave viewport because all other settings are literally identical. Let's save the work and preview for the first time. By default, all the images should be hidden and only the second text card has a marker being set. You can see that whenever the marker hits the viewport bottom, the image fades in and then fades out whenever the marker leaves the viewport. This is something that works on either side of the viewport, including the left and the right hand side if needed, of course. So far, so good. Let's get back to Bricks Editor and activate markers for other text cards. What I have to do next is simply duplicate the marker three times and spread copies across the other three text cards. Keep in mind that the interaction settings for the very first marker are carried over to its duplicates, which means that all of them refer to the same element currently, the image with an ID of image2. That's why I have to open each interaction individually and make it point to a different target, or better say, corresponding image. All right, everything should be okay, let's preview. That looks really nice, but we are definitely not over yet. According to what I have noticed, there's some strange bug related to the enter viewport and leave viewport events. So whenever the target element, in this case it is our marker element, is rendered in viewport immediately, the enter viewport is been triggered, but when you scroll on and knock the marker off the viewport, the leave viewport event is not fired. It happens every next time. And this means that our two classes continue to be toggled incorrectly. I repeat, this happens only if the target element is rendered in viewport immediately. And as you can see, everything is being messed up. So in order to fix that, I decided to initially, quote unquote, move all the markers down the page only temporary, and then on content load, get them all back to the right position. I can do that by assigning another, or better say temporary, CSS class to each marker. That temporary CSS name will be init pause, and it gets removed immediately after the page content is loaded. So I'm gonna assign init pause class to each marker now. Let's go back to our CSS code and define the top property of the init pause class name. So this top position moves all the markers for 500 VH down the page, let's say 500. And if I scroll down, you'll find them sit deep down the page, all right? As usually, if I don't want the CSS to be active in editor, I can prepend the bricks is front end class and make everything look right. Now I'm going to use another interaction event named content loaded to remove my temporary class from all the markers. The host of interaction can be element, any element on stage and this is a one-time event only, but I've chosen to relate it to the top container. So the trigger shall be content loaded event with a minimum delay of 0.1 seconds. The action should be remove attribute. The key is going to be the class. The value is our temporary class name init pause. The action trigger is the CSS selector. Which one? It is the marker itself. Don't forget to add the dot before the CSS class name. And that should be a temporary fix for the 
enter viewport and leave viewport issue. I believe it will be fixed soon and you'll no longer have to use it, but for now this is a must. Let's save changes and preview to be sure it all works fine. Alright, let's see what we have to do to make it work on mobile devices now. I'll switch to mobile landscape first. It looks like the images column is underneath the text card, which means that we just have to give it a higher stacking order. So the Z index of one should fix it up. The images column no longer needs to be 100 VH. I'm gonna make it 38 VH instead. All the images don't need to be 62 VH anymore. I'll make them comply the other container. So I'll set their height to 100%. Text cards are no longer 100 VH high. Their height is set to auto. I didn't have to change it because it has already been set before I saved them to templates. We can save and preview for mobile devices now. You can notice that the image change is not ideal, but it's also far from being wonky, so to speak. I mean, this effect works on mobile devices just fine without any major adjustments, right? Let's switch to desktop in preview. The only required adjustment is the one relating to the last text card. It's quite obvious that when the last text card marker leaves the viewport, the last image fades out too soon by leaving the gap. On top of that, the last image should be picked up by the last text card, but it happens sooner than expected. All right, and why exactly? Well, because images are 62 VH high, centered vertically, which means that there's a gap of 19 VH at the image column top and 19 VH at the bottom. Let's get back to Brick's editor to fix that. So 19 VH gap at the, at the images column bottom can be fixed by adding a negative bottom margin of 19 VH for desktop and tablet devices. While for mobiles, that negative margin is not needed and I'm gonna set it to zero. When it comes to fixing the last image fading out too soon, it's obviously all about the marker height. How come that? Well, I already mentioned that the marker has officially left the viewport only in case none of its pixels are found in the viewport, which means that the leave viewport event depends on marker's height. So all I have to do at the end is to stretch the marker all the way down to the text card bottom, all right? And I'm going to use calculate CSS calc function to make markers height responsive too. And the height is going to be 100% uh, minus 50% plus 16VH. Let's now get back to my CSS code and make all the markers hidden on front end, which is going to be the very last step of this tutorial. At the end, I'll do the final preview. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you're gonna come up with more cool stuff that can be achieved by using the markers and enter viewport, leave viewport events or triggers. Once again, you can download the training file from the link found in this video description if you like, it's completely free. And other than that, stay well, peace and love.